Welcome back to my final video of the Chris Melling series, where I'll be analyzing and trying to recreate this. I don't know what in the world this is. Where'd he what call it? it at? Corner. Come on. He's trying to make this ball for it. It has to go in between all of the balls. That's a chance. Wow, what a shot. After nailing a beautiful full table mass A and getting perfect shape on the five, Chris's attention immediately shifts to the one ball. He quickly casts a hex on it and then disappears in a flash of white light. The announcers are already discussing what he can do with the one because it only has one open pocket. The closest corners are blocked by the eight and 14. The other side pocket is blocked by the 15 and the opposite two corners are blocked by literally every other stripe on the table. In fact, the only pocket you wouldn't want to shoot this ball in is the only one it'll go to. Taking a quick look back at the interview with Chris Melling shows what he was thinking. I thought, well, how do I get on the one? And the one would only go in the side pocket. It was so tight to get on it. But not only that, I wanted to kind of break other balls out to give myself a chance uh, of it going in another pocket. But when I break a ball out from a, a position, I'd like to give myself a guarantee of landing on another ball, but I couldn't do it in that situation. Chris decides to accept what the table has given him and play for the one ball in the side pocket. The shot is difficult to get position on, and even with good position, it's still quite a challenge due to the steep angle of the approach on a side pocket. Chris plays a stop shot on the five ball, leaving him a nice angle to get to the other side of the seven ball, which should leave him an angle to get down to the one. But he makes a careless mistake and bumps the seven with the cue ball. This leaves him straight in on the seven ball, and he finds himself having to bridge over the 11. I give myself a chance to get on it in the middle. I didn't get on in, in the middle because I landed bridging. I just thought, right, I'll pop the ball in the middle. I can't miss that shot. And I'm just going to send the one round the angles and play it like a bank pull shot. Chris once again accepts what the table has given him and simply rolls the seven into the side pocket, setting up position for the four rail bank into the corner pocket, and he nails it. I step up to the table for my first attempt and I try to just shoot a firm stop shot and I get surprisingly close to making it on my first try. On my second and third attempts, I try to cut it with a little more angle, but it's too much. And the one ball goes way off course, running into the eight ball on attempt two and farther from the pocket on the same side than what I was on my first attempt. On attempt four, I decide to go back to trying to hit it dead straight, but I get some unintended left hand English on the cue ball, which transfers right onto the one ball and throws it off course. On attempt five, I make the one ball off of the 12 in the opposite corner. And on attempt six, I hit the one straight into the eight ball. I decide to take a look at the footage to get the positioning of the balls as perfect as I can. I notice that there is an outline of where the rack would normally go. So I use the rack to place the one ball and the eight ball as accurately as possible. On attempt seven, I once again fail to hit the one ball straight on and end up putting the cue ball in front of the path that the one ball was taking towards the pocket. I set up for my eighth attempt and try to focus more on my fundamentals. If you look at the Chris Melling footage, literally all you have to do is shoot a fast dead straight stop on the one ball and it's already set up to go in. The cue ball draws back slightly, but I managed to hit the one ball dead straight. It navigates through all the other traffic on the table and makes a beeline straight for the corner pocket. The fact that Chris Melling was able to make a four rail bank on his first attempt just shows how talented he is, but that really isn't what makes this shot so amazing. Chris Melling not only knew how he had to hit the one ball to make it, but he also knew exactly where it would travel around the table. He saw that it would miss the 12, 13, 9, 10, and 8 ball. Look at how little room the one ball has to navigate through to get past the 9, 10, and 8. He persevered through impossible situations, bad luck, and one of his own mistakes. He showed that you can actually get out from anywhere if you're good enough. And to quote Chris Melling. Come on, I mean, how many times you think you try that a hundred times, how many times you make that shot? Uh, probably about 99. All right, guys, this is the end of the video. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed and wanna watch more videos like this, hit that button and I'll see you in the next video.